Hi friends, my name is Sarah. We talk about the climate crisis on this channel and today I've got my very special guest, my mom. And we're gonna be doing a garden tour. She's gonna give us some master gardener tips and then we'll talk about how small farms and climate change have a connection. Hi, welcome to my garden. We call it the tree house garden. This summer I've been growing fruit in my little mini orchard, lots of herbs and vegetables and um, I'm excited to show you around. So this year I set a goal for myself to raise all of my plants from seeds. One of my favorite buying places is called Seed Savers. They make a conscientious effort to protect seeds and make sure that varieties don't go instinct. My grandmother, Carm, left me this beautiful jade plant and it's in the greenhouse here. And every so often I just take a couple clippings off, plant it in some really good soil and I'm creating new jade plants from her heirloom. Jade plant. Do you know how long she had it for? Uh, gosh, I don't know. Like, it's, it's a pretty old plant, it's right? It's pretty old. She left it to my mom, who then gave it to me. Wow, intergenerational plants. Yes. We love. So, I planted a lot of different varieties of tomatoes this year, and I tried some really unique ones, like the zebra tomatoes. So, I have red zebra tomatoes and green zebra tomatoes, and they look really beautiful in a salad. Ah, so mostly salads. Can you put them in anything else? Uh, or you well? can make the beautiful um, caprese salad with the fresh mozzarella slice of... We're vegan. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, yes, everyone watching this is vegan. Okay, well, anyway, you could do fake cheese or fresh mozzarella, a slice of tomato, um, some basil, which I have a whole row of, and then sprinkle some balsamic and salt on the top. It's amazing. So another good gardening tip that I learned in my master gardening classes is that when you plant a row of tomatoes, the next row you want to plant are carrots or a row of herbs. So here we're looking at my beautiful sage. Then we have uh, peppers, same rule for them. And next to the peppers we have then a row of basil. So a good tip is in between your vegetables to plant either carrots or herbs. If space is an obstacle, don't forget you can always plant in pots. You can do wine barrels, ceramic pots, and I went to the local farm store and these are actually watering um, tubs for the cattle and the horses and I grow my herbs from seed in here. Put really good soil in, sprinkle in your seeds and they heat up nicely and as you can see I have some really awesome basil. You don't always have to go and buy seeds at the garden store. When they get dead, like these right here, you just pop them off let them dry and once they're dry you have seeds i could sprinkle these in the planter right now and they will make new flowers an essential component to having a bountiful garden is making sure you provide lots of flowering plants that will attract the bees and the butterflies this is a butterfly bush and it's constantly swarmed not only by butterflies but pollinating bees although gardening can be kind of expensive especially if you don't grow from your own seeds uh, the money that I save on vegetables is enormous. So I can come out to the garden and pick my herbs and my vegetables and kind of create my dinner plan around what we have that's able to be harvested. Besides the health benefits of eating organic, uh, fresh vegetables, um, definitely is the fact that I work a pretty stressful job being a professor and teacher and coming to the garden every day to just kind of decompress and listen to the birds and watch the hummingbirds and just actually be outside is quite comforting. Well, I hope I inspired you to try some gardening on your own, whether it's just growing some herbs in your windowsill or putting in some planters in your backyard. It's really important to start small and take baby steps and then maybe one day you'll have a big garden like this. Some of the connections between climate change and small farms should be pretty obvious because of our food systems, but some examples are that small farms build climate resiliency. So that means when we have more heat waves and natural disasters, we can look inward to our communities to have that food security because a lot of the food that we eat today and pick up at the supermarket are flown in from all around the world. So when we have these food shortages or food problems with our, our systems, we can really look inward. And if we have our own garden, then we, we know we have that peace of mind of actually having food and not having to worry about it. Personal gardens are also great because you can opt for natural fertilizers like compost, and that cuts down on your food waste as well. You can use regenerative agricultural practices, which allow the soil to re-fertilize and really get it to its natural state again. And you can grow more fruits and veggies, which may allow you to live a vegan or plant-based lifestyle if you so wish. 
And while I believe that growing your own food and having a garden can be a great tool in our climate resistance toolkit, it is inaccessible and has a lot of barriers for many people. For example, if you don't have a car, how do you get to the Garden Depot to get all of your vegetables? If you don't own a plot of land, where would you plant things? And the money and the startup costs that are associated with gardens like this is a lot, even if your return on investment eventually will be cheaper. So I'm sitting here filming this and a hummingbird keeps coming by and looking at this beautiful sunflower. And that's another aspect I kind of wanted to touch on is that for my mom, it's not about sustainability. And as climate communicators, I think it's really interesting to think about this and see this through a different frame because she talked about all the personal benefits of gardening be it from relaxation and decompressing from work or just connection with our land and really understanding where our food comes from and having responsibility for our food. But it's not about climate change for her. And to me, I don't think that that's the most important thing. If she's doing something sustainable and something that's great for our earth, does it have to be about climate change? I would personally say no, but I would love to know your thoughts. Do people have to have a eco mindset to do sustainable things? Let me know. This is a great lesson to learn as climate communicators because we need to be framing things in ways that people understand. Climate change affects people and people care about a lot of different things. So just because your values are different from someone else's doesn't mean that you can't maybe push them or nudge them in the right direction for environmental benefits if you frame it in ways that they understand. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe. I talk about our climate crisis here and what you can really do to make an impact. Thank you friends for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.